Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I want to start by uh, apologizing to you for the long delay in getting here. Uh, obviously, this would have been much easier for me at 3 o'clock this afternoon as well as you. Uh, we were really unable to make a statement until uh, Ted Bundy's lawyer uh, agreed to it and until we had worked out some of the paperwork in regard to the videotape that was made uh, this afternoon. And I promised her that I would play by her rules explicitly and only in the last 15 minutes or so has she uh, uh, given the go-ahead for me to come and talk to you all. So uh, again, I apologize for being late. Uh, I have no formal statement to make. I will take your questions um, other than to say that I was invited here by Ted Bundy. Uh, I had uh, corresponded with him for some months and he asked me to come here. He had a statement that he wanted to make and he wanted to make it to me. And so I agreed to do that. Uh, I videotaped him. We had an hour together this afternoon and uh, we uh, concluded that about uh, 3.30 and uh, from that time to this, we've been attempting to uh, work out the details in the legal sense, as I indicated. What did he tell you? The statement that he made uh, had to do with his own life, uh, a little bit about his childhood and uh, how he sees himself, what he's thinking now and what he's feeling. And uh, especially uh, he wanted to make a statement to the world about uh, pornography, both softcore pornography and hardcore pornography. Yes, I, I will be. Uh, Ted Bundy knew that I served on the Attorney General's Commission on Pornography, which probably had uh, a lot to do with the fact that he invited me to be here. Uh, he said that he was raised in a very happy home. He was not abused as a child. He was not abused sexually. He was not abused physically or emotionally. And that uh, he saw himself as coming out of a relatively happy uh, whole home where there was a lot of uh, love and where what happened to him cannot be attributed to uh, major mistakes on the part of his family. Uh, he feels that uh, he ran into trouble when he was 12 or 13 years of age and he began to find pornography in the uh, drug stores. Uh, he found some of it along the road that had been discarded. Uh, he began to be addicted to it. Uh, it became an obsession with him. And uh, as he went through the adolescent years, he continued uh, down that progressive road of wanting ever more uh, uh, violent and uh, hardcore material. And uh, as he reached the end of his adolescence, uh, he was absolutely obsessed with this. Uh, he made the jump from what would be considered softcore pornography to the extremely violent material and walked his way through that. Uh, one of the findings of the Attorney General's Commission on Pornography is that it is progressive. What stimulated yesterday will not be enough tomorrow. It moves toward harder and harder material, especially for some individuals. Some people are more vulnerable to it. He was one of them. And as he, as he uh, progressed through this, he eventually came to the point where there was nothing else that he could see visually that would give him that high. And he thought about that and considered it for a year or two and then made the jump, the tragic jump, to acting out his behavior and actually killing somebody. I'm sorry. Any remorse for any of his crimes? There was a great deal of remorse. Uh, he wept several times while uh, talking to me. Uh, he expressed great uh, regret and remorse for what he had done for the families that were hurting. Uh, a time or two where I asked him explicit questions, uh, he was uh, so choked up that he was not able to answer me. Did he say anything about his stay on death row? How long his stay was? Did he what? Did he say anything about how long his stay on death row? He did not mention how long he'd been on death row. Is he prepared to resolve the crime using this? The 
question is, uh, Ted Bunny, Bundy resolved to die. Uh, yes and no. He does not want to die, obviously. Uh, he is uh, uh, going through a lot of uh, agony tonight. He is exhausted. He's emotionally and physically exhausted. Uh, he is uh, reflecting on his life. It's a very difficult time for him, and he is frightened about tomorrow morning. I think all of us would be. But also, I believe that he will will walk to the electric chair if he does not receive a stay and uh, take it. I did not ask him how many murders that he had committed, but I did say uh, in the beginning, for the record, uh, do you admit that you have killed many women and children? And he said, yes, I admit that I am a murderer or something to that effect. That's not a direct quote, but we began at that point. Did he, any details the murders? Did he talk about his afterlife? Uh, yes, uh, he has um, resolved his relationship with God. He's a believer in Jesus Christ, and uh, he feels that he's been forgiven by God for his sins, even though they are virtually unforgivable on this earth. Does he think he can stay? What are you going to do with your interview? Uh, the videotape that we obtained uh, is. Uh, restricted. I promised Ted that we would do nothing with it until he is executed. Uh, if he receives a stay or if his life uh, sentence, if his, his uh, death penalty would be commuted, uh, the tape would never be shown. I made a promise to him for that. So it obviously cannot be seen tonight. Uh, beyond that, we're going to have to look at the tape tomorrow and see what we have and decide what we're going to do with it. Did I believe him? In what regard? The question, the question is, did I believe uh, Ted Bundy in his uh, expression of remorse? Uh, yes, I did believe him. I think it's genuine. Uh, I realize that this man is, uh, is perhaps the most notorious con artist as well as a murderer, but I believe the process of what he's been through has had a profound effect on him. And yes, I believe he does feel it. May I express this to you? He talked at considerable length about the process of desensitization that occurred uh, after he killed the first woman. He went through a six-month period where he was in great distress. He was extremely guilty. He was frightened. He was going through. He, he couldn't believe that he had done that. For six months, he went through that. That gradually subsided. And this sexual frenzy that he would go through uh, occurred again, and he killed another woman. Only this time, the, uh, the intense uh, agony was a little easier to cope with, and it lasted for a shorter period of time. He did that so many times, he got to the point that he could not feel anymore. He got to the point that he didn't, he didn't have that remorse. He killed it. He desensitized it. Uh, those of us in, in the field of behavioral science are very familiar with that. It's what uh, people in Nazi Germany did in terms of killing the Jews. They got to the point that they did not feel. He did say to me that he is thankful that through the process of what has been going on, that again he is in touch with his feelings and his guilt, and he feels great remorse for what he's done. How old was he when he committed his first murder? Say it again. question is what has been going on uh, only what you know about uh, having a date set to uh, walk to the electric chair and have the days and the hours click off and all of this activity and facing his own life has uh, has had an effect on him say it again the question is does uh, mr bundy intend to fight his execution uh, that is in the hands of the attorneys, and uh, obviously they are, are maneuvering, but I don't know that side of it. Have you described any of his murders at all to you? Any of his... The main message of that hour was a message to the American people about pornography. That's why he called me here. He said, you are going to kill me, apparently, speaking of himself, at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, and that will protect society from me. 
but he said at the same time there are out there many many other people who are potentially addicted to uh, hardcore pornography and may do the same kind of things and you're doing nothing about that that was a major concern to him he was he was uh, very anxious to point out to me and he wanted to say to everybody that pornography did not cause him to do the things that he did he said i accept the full responsibility for it but he did say that uh, that was the fuel for his fantasies that led him to do these horrible things and uh, his concern is that other people out there are falling victim to the same thing and innocent women and children are going to be affected by it that's that's why he invited me here question is did he admit to specific murders he is in the process of doing that with investigators I uh, I uh, I, don't, I don't know about at this moment I think he's with his attorney right now but uh, he has uh, has for the last several days been through an absolutely exhausting exercise of reliving and pulling up the details of those uh, killings and uh, the emotional ordeal of going through that is part of the reason why he is so uh, exhausted now. But he is giving that kind of detail to investigators. I did not take him through that. The question is, how old when was he when the first murder occurred? I did not ask him that question. Uh, I don't know. But uh, you all can see, I think, the reason. The moment he confessed, the appeal process was pretty much over. And uh, it's, it's like uh, asking for your own death certificate to do that. And, and he was torn inside. He wrote me months ago and indicated that he would like to uh, set the record straight and confess, even if it meant... Uh, the end of his own life but he was still he told me that through uh, another individual several months ago that he wanted to set the record straight and in fact that he would eventually do it but I had been uh, and falsely accused of attempting to interfere with the uh, the execution tomorrow morning that is not true if it were not for the efforts of John Tanner I do not believe Ted Bundy would have ever come to the point of confessing and laying those details out and making the statement that he did today. He tried to evade it, and I wish you would tell the public that. <laughs> Say it again. The question is, do I believe, certainly uh, do, in view of uh, the terrible things that have occurred. Uh, I have read uh, a lot about Ted Bundy. And in a situation like this, where so many people have suffered so severely and where families are still shredded, will never recur, never uh, really recover from it. I believe that, uh, that the man deserves to die. But I can also tell you, and I don't know whether you can accept this or not, but I feel compassion for Ted Bundy as well. Uh, 